I'd like to make a very important connection between the harmonics of the circle and the divine music of the soul. When we talk about music, we're talking about the elements of vibration and frequency. So this will involve sacred geometry at its most pertinent because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the unit circle and I'm actually going to have to divide it into every 12 degrees. So I'm going to divide it into 30 parts. If you counted all these little notches here, because um, 30 times 12 degrees, so each one of these is 12 degrees, another 12, another 12. And I'm going to relate all of this, how it um, combines effectively to make us understand music. So this, this lecture here is a, a tribute to uh, a colleague of mine in the USA called Marshall Lefferts, and he wrote this beautiful book called, called Cosmometry. And it was just done recently in 2019. I'd just like to show you the, the, the power of using an image. So when, we, when, when I was reading this section here, we're looking at the mathematics of the Pentagon, but he divides the circle into the chromatic scale, the diatonic scale, and then we find a golden mean ratio in this. And this is the connection between sacred geometry and the music of the tritone. And it's actually attributed to another teacher who we're going to talk about called Richard Merrick. I just wanted to acknowledge that when authors write amazing books, they inspire other authors as well. So, so the first thing I'm going to do is that we're going to divide the circle into five lots of twelve. We're going to divide the circle into the pentagon here. So that's why this title is called Penta Hexa Union, because we're actually going to draw the hexagon as well. So I'm going to start from the, the zenith point here. And if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, you can see because five lots of six make 30 because I've divided the circle into 30. So you can see here that this is the construction of the pentagon. And I go another one, two, three, four, five, six, because six twelves are 72 because the pentagon is based on 72 degree angles and the 108. So the next. One, two, three, four, five, six is the next one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So the pentagon is almost completed with five turns of 72 because five lots of 72, five lots of 72 make the 360 degrees. But these angles here, the internal angles are 108 degrees. And what, what we're keeping an eye on in this lecture is that the golden ratio of this point from the base of the pentagon to the apex here. I'll just draw it in very lightly. If I took the golden ratio of that point, there's a mystical point here, which is we're going to relate it to the tritone function at the end. So this is a, a dedication to, to the musical theory. And I just want to make the connection between how it relates to the penta and the hexa. I'm going to show you the hexagon. So when I say hexagon, we're talking about the division of the circle into six points. So you can see I'm going to mark these points on the circle that obey the division into six. So I'll just quickly draw this in in yellow because we want to make the distinction between the five and the six. And for those of you who've studied with me, we know that the five and the six is the key to the DNA molecule. So I'm moving every so to go from here to there, you can see it's one, two, three, four, five. So this is the last one. Now, the beauty of this pentahexa relationship is really special because suddenly these points, the five points and the six points, allow, I'll just draw it in here, that there's, there's a distance of one there. And if you look closely over here, there's a distance of two and here's one two three so from here to there is three and that's we're looking for the four one two three four five that's a five so we're looking for the four one two three four this is the four over here as well so basically the beautiful thing about these intervals of the penta and the hexa is that it beautifully divides the circle into segments of one two three four five and six and no other geometry successfully does this in the circle and there's something special about prime numbers because the primes are the atoms of creation and i want to explain why that when you take the first three prime numbers two times three times five it's 
2 times 3 is 6 times 5 is 30. So I'm, I'm trying to explain why the circle divided into 30 gives this special connection to music. The next one, if we multiplied the next prime number by 7, 30 times the 7 is 210. Now, in prime number theory, all these numbers are like gateways or portals to, to predict the next prime number. We won't go into prime numbers now, but I just wanted to explain why did we choose 30. Because we're talking about 12 degrees, we call that a do decanary scale. D-O is 2 and dec, D-E-C is 10. So do dec means 12. So a decanary is about dividing the circle into 12 and 12 has a lot to do with the dodecahedron, right? So, but inside the dodecahedron, the 12, we have the 5. So that's why we drew the pentagon. And when we're talking about the 5 scale, we're talking about the finery. So I'll just write these words in here. So, so when we're talking about 5-fold, we call in that a finery scale. And when we're talking about the 12, because this diagram combines the 5 and the 12, that's called the dodecanary. Now, the, the reason why this is special is that this breaks down to perfect intervals in music. And this work was done by Richard Merrick, who gave us the tritone function. So he wrote about the chromatic ring model. And basically what he's saying is that these nodal points here, see how we had three here? The distance from the penta to the hexa is one, two, three. He calls this the tritone function. So when we go into the tensions of sound, it is resolved by the amen. That's what he calls the tritone function. If you want to know more about the sacred geometry connection to music, study the work of Richard Merrick and just look for tritone function. It's well explained in this book here. So what, what we would like to do is also relate all this to the Fibonacci scale. So when we look at the piano keys, there's a pentatonic scale. That's the one, two, three, four, five. These black keys here relate to the pentatonic scale. It's composed of the two and the three. So two and three make five. You notice that these are Fibonacci numbers. And but when we look at all the white keys from C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and back to the octave C, we've got eight white keys. So if you add the five pentatonic notes to the eight white keys, we've got 13. So the 13, as you know, is the next Fibonacci number, and that relates to what we call the chromatic scale. So Richard Merrick is tra talking about this tritone function. So p perhaps when we do this invocation in the chant of the Amen, uh, how tension is resolved into functionality, we could probably express it by the effect of the music. If we could picture what's happening, there's everything is trying to reach the golden ratio. So something happens at this point because there's this is the line of the golden ratio. That's the five point. So when we chant in in harmony with the universe, certain wave functions are formed and it fits perfectly into the intervals of the pentagon and the hexagon. So the reason why I wanted to mention pentahexa is because somehow this all connects to the DNA. And I just want to show you the first image I've ever seen of the DNA molecule printed was from this book called Rhythms of Vision by Lawrence Blair. And um, this was done in 1975. You can see here that the molecular structure of DNA is based on this hexagon connected to the pentagon. And then he takes a transverse cut of the DNA molecule over here and we can see that the transverse cut of DNA, it's a union of the penta and the hexa. So that's why we say that music has deep effects on the soul because when we're in harmony with the chanting and the, the songs, which are frequencies, it transforms our body. And here's the sacred geometry of the circle divided into the five and to the six, the penta and the hexa. And it's making all these beautiful connections. And I could even show you another thing. One more thing to conclude is that even in the crystal world, there's, this is about crystal resonance. When we look at the dodecahedron as a crystal, this is a, a hand cut quartz. But as I turn it around inside the quartz, inside the center you'll see a cubic a moment where the cube is revealed so that 
and, and that's a really interesting thing because that's showing the hexagonal nature of crystalline structures and how it's all connected to the Fibonacci sequence. It's interesting too because every, about the, the number 12 degrees, every 12 degrees has a connection to the 12th Fibonacci number. So the 12th Fibonacci number, as you go 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144. So when we hit the 12th note of the Fibonacci sequence, the 12th Fibonacci number is 144. And this has a lot to do with the speed of light harmonic because it's 144,000 minutes of arc per grid second. So this union of pentahexa inside the circle not only relates to the light and to the DNA, it makes a very deep connection to the music of the soul.